Namaste. So let's continue with the Mahishasura of Mardini Stotram from verse 5. Ai rana durmada shatruva dodita durdara nirjara shakti brute chatura vichara durina mahashiva duta krita praramardipate durita duriha durashaya durmati danava duta kritanta mate jaya jaya he mahishasura mardini ramya kapardini shaila sute Salutations to you, O Divine Mother. I invoke you, who manifested to destroy the battle-intoxicated arrogant demons, and who is the possessor of unrestrainable and imperishable power, who made Lord Shiva her messenger, that Shiva who is distinguished by cleverness in deliberation and is the Lord of the ghosts and goblins, who is honored for rejecting the proposal of the evil-minded and ignorant messenger of the demon Shumba, hence bringing an end to the demons themselves. Victory to you, victory to you. I take refuge in your auspicious feet, O destroyer of the demon Mahishasura, who shines with beautiful locks of hair, the daughter of the mountain. So she is really into keeping the demons in line. And she has so much power because she is the primal force of the universe. She is the life force of everyone. She is the laws of nature and even consciousness. So there's no one who can defeat her. And even Lord Shiva agreed to become her messenger and try to convince the demons to go back to their home in Patalaloka at the bottom of the universe. But even they wouldn't listen to Lord Shiva, who gave them so many boons and mystical powers and stuff. So they had to fight her. And she gave no quarter. All these stories are in the scriptures, especially the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam, which we have published online. There's a series on it that you can watch. And know that this type of story is both true and metaphor, both. It's true because she does chastise the demons, the battle-intoxicated warriors. Huh? Look at what she's doing now with the climate. The military is very worried because the climate change is going to mess up all their operations. So actually the military is the more climate aware branch of the government. They take it very seriously. So she's going to put a stop to all these excess weapons and spending ridiculous amounts of money on war when it should be used for the welfare of the citizens. So the demons always manage to disturb her and get her angry. And then she retaliates with overwhelming power. All the militaries in the world can't do a thing against the laws of nature that are changing the climate. In fact, they're responsible for a lot of it because they make a lot of emissions, carbon emissions and so on. So she's gonna put them in their place. She puts everybody in their place. <laughs> the messenger of the demon Shumba came to her with a very indecent proposal that she should become the wife of the demons and then enjoy all of their opulences and so on. Well, she told him right where to go. <laughs> you should read the story in, in Devi Bhagavatam. It's really funny. Huh? So this means that one should not approach 
her with a lusty attitude. She hates that more than anything because she already belongs to Shiva. So there's no room in her heart for a lover other than Shiva. I mean, who could compare anyway? So anybody who approaches her in a lusty mood gets immediately vanquished. Uh, this is why most of the people who claim to practice Tantra actually are just lusty demons. They don't have any foundation in the scriptures. They never do puja. They don't know Sanskrit. They can't read the original source materials. They've never had a real guru in a tantric lineage and so on. It's just an excuse for sex indulgence. So don't believe those people, but rather go to the original source and find out the real tantric teachings. Verse 6. Ai sharanagata vairi vaduvara viravara bhayadaya kare tribhuvana mastaka shula virodhi shirodhika dikrita malasula kare dumi dumi tamara dundubi nada maho mukari krita dinma kare Jaya Jaya Te Mahishasura Mardini Ramya Kapardini Shaila Sute. Salutations to you, O Divine Mother. I invoke you, who gave fearlessness to the heroic soldiers of the enemy when their good wives took her refuge, whose pure trident in hand captured the heads of the heads, the rulers of the three worlds, who opposed that trident whose victory gives rise to the dumi-dumi sound of the dundubi drum, flowing incessantly like water, which fills all the directions with joy. Victory to you, victory to you. I take refuge in your auspicious feet, O destroyer of the demon Mahishasura, who shines with beautiful locks of hair, the daughter of the mountain. So this is what I mean about the wonderful Sanskrit. <laughs> I mean, there's just no other prayer, no other poem I can think of that has such wonderful alliteration. And we're going to see that in later verses as well. So the mood of this prayer is like a victory celebration. Huh? After she vanquishes the demons, all of her Shaktis get together and they have a huge party. <laughs> so at one time, during the battle with the demons, the wives of the demons, who were more intelligent <laughs> than their stupid husbands, approached her and asked her to grant their husbands fearlessness. Why is that? Because if one is fearless in battle and is killed, then he goes to the higher planets. So the wives of the demon soldiers wanted to make sure their husbands were spiritually benefited by being killed by her and not sent to hell, which is where most of the demon leaders wound up. See, people don't understand. <laughs> the nature of the relationship you have with God, the Supreme or Goddess, huh, determines your destination in the next life. So if you approach Shiva and Shakti with love, then you go to a very nice place. But if you approach with lust or with anger or jealousy or any of the negative feelings, then you go to hell. And this is also true of the representative of God and Goddess, the Guru. However one relates to the Guru, however one relates to the realized beings is what determines their next life. Even the gurus are considered higher than the shastras, the scriptures. So one must at all costs avoid offending a realized being because that leads to the darkest places in the universe. Verse 7. Ayi ni jahum kriti matra nira krita dhumra vilochana dhumra sate Sumara vishoshita shonita bija samudbhava shonita bija late. 
ಶಿವ ಶಿವ ಶುಂಭ ನಿಶುಂಭ ಮಹಾಹವ ಥಾರ್ಪಿತ ಭೂತ ಪಿಶಾಚರತೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಮಹಿಷಾಸುರ ಮಾರ್ಡಿನಿ ರಮ್ಯ ಕಪಾರ್ಡಿನಿ ಶೈವ ಸುಥೆ ಸಲ್ಯುಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯು ಓ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಮದರ್ ಐ ಎನ್ ವೋಕ್ ಯು ಹೂ ರಿಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಡೀಮನ್ ಧೂಮ್ರ ವಿಲೋಚನ ಇನ್ ಟು ಆಶಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಮೀರ್ ಹುಂಕಾರ who dried up the strength of the original demon Rakta Bija and similar Rakta Bijas produced from him from each drop of his blood during the battle, whose great auspicious sacrifice of Shumba and Nishumba satisfied the ghosts and fiends attending Lord Shiva. Victory to you! Victory to you! I take refuge in your auspicious feet, O destroyer of the demon Mahishasura, who shines with beautiful locks of hair, the daughter of the mountain. So this is another indication of her power, that she turned this demon to ashes simply by going, hum! <laughs> Just her hunkara. Kara means letter, or sound of the alphabet. So just by going, hum! She just blasted him to smithereens, <laughs> to powder. So this is her power, that nobody can stand against her. Well, we've already brought this out several times. Then there's Rakta Bija. Rakta, of course, means red, and blood is red. And Bija means a seed or a drop. So this Rakta Bija had a boon from Shiva that each drop of blood that of his blood that touched the ground during a battle would turn into another demon just as powerful as him. Didn't do him any good though. <laughs> Because Ma called on her form of Kali. Kali is very bloodthirsty. And so she drank up all the drops of blood before they touched the ground. And in this way, all the demons created by the drops of blood falling from Rakta Bija's wounds, were prevented from springing up and joining the battle. So Rakta Bija was also very easily defeated. And the blood from those demons satisfied all of the ghosts and fiends and demons that surround Lord Shiva. See, Lord Shiva is, he, he's completely carefree. He doesn't care whether demigods come or demons come or humans or animals or, you know, he doesn't distinguish, he doesn't discriminate. Anybody can approach Lord Shiva and worship him. He is for all. And so this is the difference between Shiva's worship and many other kinds of worship that discriminate on the basis of the modes of nature, the gunas. For example, Vishnu, only accepts worship from people in the mode of goodness. He doesn't accept from those in the mode of passion and ignorance. But Shiva doesn't discriminate. He's open to everyone. He is for all. One more verse. Dhanur Anusanga Ranakshana Sangha Parispuradanga Natatkatake Kanakapishanga Prashatka Nisanga Prasad Bhatta Shringa Hatha Bhattuke Krita Chaturanga Balakshiti Ranga Ganad Bahuranga Ranad Bhattuke Jai Jai <laughs> Mahishasura Mardini Ramya Kapardini Shaila Sute Salutations to you, O Divine Mother. I invoke you, whose bracelets dance on her shining arms following the movements of her bow during each instant of the battle, whose golden arrows become reddish with blood when they penetrate the stupid enemies and slay them, despite their howls and screams displaying vain pride, who turns the fourfold battle array of the enemies surrounding her from all sides, and consisting of many heads of various colors who stupidly howl and scream, displaying their vain pride, into a play of decreasing strength. Victory to you, victory to you, I take refuge in your auspicious feet, O destroyer of the demon Mahishasura, 
who shines with beautiful locks of hair, the daughter of the mountain. So it's very auspicious that during recitation of this verse, we heard the arti to Ma Durga in the temple. <laughs> she gives me so much bliss, you know. <laughs> She's my mother. She protects me. She guides me. She enlightens me from within. She destroys my false ego by showing that she knows everything about me, but she still loves me. <laughs> So this is the power of the goddess. This is the manifestation of the, the perfection, actually, of love and being, the motherly love of the mother of the universe. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.